Hello everyone, my name is Dave Partner. Welcome to your eighth tutorial on building APIs with Laravel. In the past tutorial, we built one of these services and we call it post. And, uh, and the post is just basically for somebody to make a post and uh, view the post and view lists of posts. And we used Postman to test uh, some of these posts. We use Postman here to test uh, the APIs we had and it worked. And um, the next thing we want to do is to create the user service. Many of the big applications you are, you are building will make use of the user's model where users have to register, log in, get authenticated, and then uh, just basically be able to access all your services. So user has to register first. So that particular kind of um, service is a little tricky because you need to identify the user and of, of course give the user a token, a series of string that you will use to identify each of their requests. You know, this kind of um, API, the way it works is that a certain user hits your browser and then logs in, then the, the whole information travels this way. They hit a user um, API endpoint and it comes here, hits a user service and the user logs in. And what um, was not basically logging in, the user gets authenticated, then you generate a string. There's a string in their, in their profile let me show you that string they will use it they will attach it to any um, here's a string API token so they, they have to attach this string to any requests they are making on the website so if they're making any other request to use any other service as we have here maybe they want to see list of restaurants and you want to make sure that anybody that wants to see a list of restaurants must have logged in among all the details they are sending to um, view list of restaurants, they have to send that API token. And as you can see, the API token is unique to every user. It's very unique. So every time somebody sends a request to view something or submits a request, maybe want to create a new post, among all the parameters they will create, they have to create, they have they, they will send, they have to send the API token along with it. So here is it. So I'll show you how to do this. I've already done this, so I'll walk you through what I did and uh, that is to save time so first of all we have to just like we did in the posts we have to create the migrations remember in go to databases um, let me minimize all this so you'll see so this is our lumen blog and um, which is our core api platform and uh, if you go to databases you go to migrations you see three folders there go to migrations um, your own should have only table posts but I created users posts and this is how I created it I went to the command line and uh, ran this command php artisan make migration create users table uh, when you run this command you wait a little it will give you a result something like this that it has um, created the users table and uh, if your editor hasn't seen it um, you have to manually go to your folder to view it. You navigate to your folder, navigate to databases for migrations, and you will see it. Because sometimes your command line may create it, but your editor hasn't seen it. All right, so once you have it, you can then open it and start viewing. So let's open ours, um, users. You don't need to run it twice. If you run it twice, it will create two of these files, which means you have to delete one. So, um, now we have it so what you have is basically this file and yours won't have this i manually typed this and uh, i manually typed this so you you type this schema and uh, drop the users then you come here and type schema create users function blueprint table then you create all this but what i want you to pay attention to is number one is that the email is unique the password cannot be more than 60 depending on what uh 60 characters depending on what uh you wish to set in your password then the api token so there should be a field called api token and i'm just guessing i just want it to be 60 then you make it unique every user needs to have a unique api token then this is the remember token and this is the timestamp just uh, just put type it like this and the next thing you need to do is to create a user's controller so we go to app you know lumen doesn't have um have the packages for creating controllers so you have to actually copy an existing one or you create it manually then copy the, con the content 
so I right clicked here and did new file and created users and named it users controller then I copied what I already have here in posts controller came to users controller and modified it all right so the first thing you need to make sure to observe in this file is that you have you're calling the, the model the user model if you are using 5.4 if you started with us you notice that this file this is the user model it's inside your app of course and um, inside here so if you uh, if you had it it's cool if you didn't have it you have to create it all right you just clone what you have here and uh, put it here and let me open it user here's the user model so um, of course it has all this in built mine came my own lumen came with the user model so make sure you have all this typed out if yours doesn't have it and then what you want to, what i want you to pay attention to is the fee level you have name you have email you have password you have api token that's the fee level and then in the hidden you have password you have remember token then you have api token hidden, okay so that's sorted out we'll get back to where we were at our controller so in the users controller make sure you have you are importing users here the user because our controller was named singular user then of course make sure it's users controller and right here we're expecting the user to send a request or whatever client to send a request to this and we want to generate a random string of 60 character length and remember in our user model in our user We've made it um, in our uh, migration. We've made sure that this field can only be unique. The API token can only be unique. So right here, what we do is we generate this random string of 60 characters. If it's not unique, it won't save in the database. It will throw error. So the user has to try, the client has to try again, and it will generate a unique one. Then the password, we want to hash it. Um, I want you to know that this is the same thing as basically saying uh, for those of you that are coming from Laravel this is basically saying bcrypt um, bcrypt this way so this guy and this guy are the same so but in Lumen Lumen doesn't have all the Laravel packages just like that. So if your 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 version, if you try this first of all, and it doesn't work, it throws error. Then you just try this one. So um, mine threw error, so I used this. So let me delete this. They're basically the same. I'll show you why. So we're hashing the password because we don't want it to be a normal password, and this we're using bcrypt to hash it. So, but for us to use make use of this particular command. Or code we have to import bcrypt here bcrypt hasher so make sure you have this imported and then you you have this like this so but if you're using the core laravel if you're using laravel to follow this tutorial then you can use bcrypt directly it should work directly out of the box all right then of course we'll create the user uh, with all the all the parameters they're sending to us then we return the, the return json we return the contents of um, the details of what we created as JSON to the user. All right, we'll look through all other um, all other methods. But one thing you have to know is that when we were creating this post controller, I just wanted you to understand how the whole thing works. So I just named it like I told you then. I named it uh, things like this. But me personally, I like to name things with conventions so that uh, if another programmer is joining the team. They know exactly what to expect in terms of naming. So if you look at my users controller, I named this one add, I named this one edit, I named this view, I named this delete. Very simple names and uh, index. So the next thing we we'll have to check out is the the route file. The route file it's in routes, and we see it's web.php. So if you come to web.php, you see that I've sufficiently, uh, I've considerably modified this file, but there is no big deal, nothing to worry about. In yours, we had a prefix API, and then remember that we used to have all the posts, all the URLs having 
uh, something like this post this post that so but since um, post is common to all all this I just there's no point typing it out manually we need to put it inside its own group and give it a prefix of post so that's exactly what we did here we basically copied what um, we have here and uh, put it here and closed it and called it as a group and called and added the API of posts, the prefix of post to it. So we removed all the posts in this endpoint. So it's basically still the same thing. The reason I did it is because we have users now coming in. So we did exactly the same thing with the prefix of users and had add, view, edit, delete, index, and um, closed it here. Then we'll close the general um, route. In Laravel, you can group several different endpoints and um, give them one single prefix like we did here we grouped all the endpoints and gave them a prefix so as you can see this this guy and this guy is inside uh, this other guy so if somebody wanted to access uh, users ad what they will simply type is um, localhost slash Okay, depending on the server port, a thousand slash API slash v1 slash. Then they have to type this prefix users, and then they have to type this add. As you can see, um, that's how it is. So if we have more more models, and uh, we can always group them up and uh, keep um, adding them. The other advantage of doing this is let me delete this. The other advantage of doing this is that we may in our users we really want to have people to we really want to have people uh, to send their API token or maybe in a certain model there are some 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 models that you want your users to send their API token along with it. You wouldn't want it to be just public. You want people to have logged in, have an API token, and send it along with um, any request so here is where we can just block it and uh, tell this particular model that um, we are expecting API token for any of the requests that is happening within this route all right so now we have these routes we've basically done um, everything we need to do we need to go and migrate so you come back to your command line and um, you run php artisan migrate and uh, it creates this table in your database if you go to your database then you will see that user table is now created and now user table is great created if you have any error running migrate you can fix the error you google it or you contact me directly and of course this is my email you can always leave me an email if you have any errors or any problems at any point or uh, you need somebody to join your team all right once you run php artisan migrate it creates your table and once your table is created next thing is to test the api so you open your postman you remember how to open postman you will click on apps then you click on web app at the bottom right of your screen then you open postman so i have my postman open and i've typed out this url before you type out this make sure that your laravel lumen blog is running so i will have to php artisan serve this guy so now that i have run that php artisan serve once my server starts i can now start oh sorry it won't work we're supposed to run phps localhost 8000 see public um, if it was Laravel that you're using, you can run PHP Artisan server. But since it's Lumen, this is how Lumen starts its server. So you click on it, as you can see, we have our server started at localhost 8000. That means we can now run our uh, we can now run our our commands here. Okay. Remember that if this is hosted on your website, this won't be localhost 8000. It will be your website.com. website.com slash api slash that all right so 
I'm just going to return it to what it was slash APS slash users slash add. We are trying to create a new user. And then once you select post, if you select get, you see that this body is dead. But since it's a post request, you know why I know it's a post request? Because if I come back to my web.php, I will see that add, this add uses, makes use of a post request. So I'll come back here in our postman, set it to post, and you see that the body is activated. You click on it, you manually type this guy, type name. You remember the parameters we're expecting? We are expecting certain parameters um, when you check out here in our migration. You say we're expecting name, email, password, and uh, but we will not enter API token, it will generate it by itself. So, what we have in a postman is name, you enter name Dave Partner, email, I enter my email, password, I enter John Lennon as my password. So, for now, since I've already created this particular guy. I'm going to change uh, this to Thelma Johnson or whatever. Then I'm going to change this to Thelma John Johnson one three four, and then the John Lennon. I can just leave this too. So once we have this in the body, we can then send. All right. So we're expecting this it to return this to us. So I click send. If it's successful, it will return successful message to us. If yours is taking time like this, it means your server is probably not really running perfectly. So let me test that my server is running well. If it's taking time, it's your server that is delaying. So um, as you can see, immediately I typed something on my keyboard. I clicked on my command line, typed something on my keyboard. It started running again. So if the server, the server kind of woke up, and as you can see, it has received the request on this from our postman, and it has given us a, a return. So um, this is what it, it returned to us. Thelma is user number two, and this is what we created, and this is it. All right, and. Um, if you have an error, remember to click on preview. Preview will give you exactly what your web page has. So if we now go to our database and click on browse on users, we'll see Thelma Johnson. We'll see here is Thelma Johnson with this email. The password is hashed. And then there's a unique API token created for Thelma Johnson. All right. So that is how to create a user registration um, a module or service for your platform your your web service platform microservice platform so thank you very much for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe and um, to my youtube channel if you have not subscribed make sure you go to youtube slash this slash brain 10 and then hit the subscribe button when the page opens so that when next i make a video you get it thank you very much see you in the next video tutorial here's the subscribe button